I drive my car up to the lake As if there's someone to awake I haven't been to bed for days I live in a twilight haze And I set my heart to the setting sun And I hope What's good that's come from Birmingham? UB4, I oh know, I hate UB4. Uh, brand Source, there you go. HP Brand Source, mm. that comes from Birmingham. Yep, here we got some down in the chili. Yep, that's all I've got. <laughs> brand Source. Far out, we'll take it. Man, yeah, we'll take it, man. my dad was mad on that stuff as yeah. well. Yeah, he introduced us to it when we were kids. Oh, yeah, slap that on a sausage butter, you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Hey Mike, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, such oh, an you. early morning, uh, and like you say, it can be pretty hard to get the old brain, the old ticker ticking over. Yeah, man. But the coffee certainly helps. Um, it's kind of kind of muggy in here, eh? It's kind of warm. Did yes. I put the air conditioning on? I should make sure that's on, um, so we don't steam up too much. Yeah, no, I'm good. Hey, uh, so Ghost Cat, that's your yeah. stage name or <laughs> artist uh, presence? Yes. Um, do you go around and like tag that, or not really? You're too well known, probably, for it now. Well, I'm not really a, I'm not really a tagger. It's, 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 yeah, it's interesting because obviously a lot of the scratch building I do incorporates graffiti, but mm. as an artist, I'm not a graffiti artist. Ah. So um, in that sense, I don't. It's yeah. not my thing, but I'm still kind of involved in it in the sense of what I make, you know, yeah, yeah, and what yeah. I incorporate in my yeah. builds. So yeah, now I'm, ah. and I'm too old to be going around tagging buildings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're originally from Birmingham in the mm-hmm. UK. And Lovely you, place. How Lovely long? Place. <laughs> how long have you been uh, back for? Um, uh, sorry, not back for. How long, how long have you been, been in, yeah, in New Zealand? For? Uh, coming up to eighteen years now. Yeah. So uh, you know, Christchurch to me is mm. my home. You know. Why did you uh, did you just like throw a dart at a dartboard at a map and? Mate, that's exactly. Ex- I am no exaggeration. That's kind of exactly how it happened. We um, we'd kind of had enough of the life we'd had in Birmingham. It's a long story, but we wanted. I, I spent a year in Australia before mm-hmm. I met my wife, uh, and I was always like, oh man, there's always a, just a better life, you know, I wanted yeah. to be by the beach, that kind of thing, Yeah. and um, got back, got my carpentry trade, so, because there was a, like a skilled shortage list, so I knew at that time, if oh, I got cool. my carpentry, I, you know, mm. I'd be able to come back and get into another country, so I did that, and then met my wife, and we were just like, oh... I've heard good things about New Zealand. People saying it's real chill. It's like Australia, but chill, more chill. So, like, oh, that sounds nice. And we were just, should we go? It was like, yeah. So we applied for that, and it was literally like you said, where are we going to go? And we got, I remember having a map out, and we were just like, oh, and we we're looking at the seas. We we're just like, oh, maybe Christchurch. That sounds pretty cool. So we we're just like, yeah. So then I contacted a few businesses, managed to get a job before I came over. Cool. And the rest is history, really. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. No so looking it- back. Yeah, well, my folks came over in 1970, and they, oh, wow. they, um, yeah, you, they, they were kind of getting as far away as possible. Yeah. Uh, was the other side of the world. Yeah, that's... <laughs> um, and then they knew one person in New Zealand. Yeah. And that was, um, it was either Canada or New Zealand, and then they um, got off, um, got, they, they came over by ship. Yeah. And um, got off the boat in uh, Auckland, um, and sort of travelled down the country and then just stopped in Christchurch and... Not so settled and, and yeah. put down roots and yeah it's interesting because it's just one of those countries that's just got a good vibe to it you know mm. it's very like I said very chill just nice city um, I'm used to being from a city that's very built up and kind of doesn't have that open space you know mm. um, so yeah we were just stoked when we got here yeah like I said when we first got in all the houses are detached and like you know you see the sea and you're just like whoa this is amazing, man. Yeah, it's all yeah. pretty compact. Christchurch is an amazing city. Um, like, uh, as far as the mountains, the sea, and just the natural environment surrounding yeah, us, the Banks yeah. Peninsula. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. Everything we've got going on is wicked. Um, and, you know, it does get cold, but, um, you know, uh, Australia's not far away. No. Right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, um, so now you build, you build uh, what's called scratch-built... Uh, like 
models, would you yeah. s- describe them? Um, little oh, yeah. um, replicas of uh, things that you see around the city. Yeah. Buildings in, spe- like, in particular. Yeah, I mean, um, it all started kind of uh, after the earthquakes. And there was obviously, like we were saying, there was a surge of art that come through the city with graffiti and murals and stuff. And then that scene kind of blew up. And then it was just kind of thing where I was just like, no one. Like, I used to follow a couple of people on Instagram used to scratch build. And I loved it, and I was just like, I've always been an artist as a kid and stuff like mm. that, and it was just something I always wanted to get into. And I was like, no one's doing it in New Zealand, and it's like such a great opportunity to kind of pay homage to what we lost, you know? Mm. So I was like, maybe I should start building stuff that used to exist. And so I just started off with the smaller things like a, a, a bins, and just <laughs> sounds so mm. weird, doesn't it? But just stuff um, in and around the city, and then it just kind of like, you know, took off from there. But yeah, essentially, I scratch build things. Not necessarily all things that didn't exist, some things that still mm. do exist, but yeah, just um, scratch building is like a form of taking various materials and building something mm. out, of, out of nothing, essentially, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you will have been here longer, like, post-quake than pre-quake. Is mm. that about right? Yeah, so like two, we were 2007. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was about 2007. <clears throat> so yeah, we've been here. So you would have just been getting your head around the place and, uh, you know, settling in and... Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a strange time. It was a strange time for everyone, you know, but... Where yeah. were you on the day of the quake? Uh, that's a good question. We were in Oxford on the first one. Yeah. Uh, and then the second one... How was, was that? Because the first one was um, more uh, out. Was it Rolleston? I can't even remember now. It was a wee way yeah, away. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was interesting because we'd got uh, my daughter was only young at the time, and um, we got this long hallway. And I'd been drinking the night before, so I was hung over to hell. So I just remember walking down the hallway, just like bouncing down the sides. And I was like, I had no idea what was going on. You know, it was crazy. Mm. But what was interesting was we were just in the process of moving, so we bought a place with the mother-in-law in Sumner. Ah. And so, and a week before we were meant to move in, uh, we were on Wakefield Ave down in Sumner. Oh yeah, uh, the house got trashed. Yeah. This big boulder. We got pictures. There's this boulder in the lounge. Yeah, the size of like a small car. And luckily, we were managed to pull out. We were lucky. <clears throat> you know, I count myself lucky and grateful because mm. mm. some people weren't as fortunate. Um, but yeah, we managed to pull out the sale of the house and I just got this, yeah, someone could have been killed, you know. So. Now, which earthquake was that? Sorry, the, the second one. That was the second one, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was the, yeah, yeah. It was the second one. Um, so yeah, it was, um, it was an interesting time. Yeah, because that was in the middle of the day. Um, that's full on having your house uh, a boulder. Well, uh, the way I, well, I look sheesh. at it is it would have been terrible if we'd have already been in. Yeah. So that could have been someone killed or yeah, someone, totally. you know, so... I, I'm grateful for the fact yeah. that, yeah, it didn't happen, you know, earlier kind of thing, sooner, I mean. I think you don't realise how life um, kind of all fits together sometimes until yeah. there's an enormous disaster and, like, those little insignificant things become, like, pivotal. They become big Hugely, things. Hugely, yeah. Uh, you know, oh, I forgot, yeah, yeah, you might forget your cell phone or you might... Just things that you just totally weren't thinking about. Yeah, it's interesting um, as well because so many people are, oh, you're gonna, you go back home or you're gonna do. It? I was like, no, because like, why would I do that? You know, forge forward with this life. It's gonna take more than an earthquake to get me back home. It's mm. kind of in a way in life, you just kind of have to, have to accept what is. Well done. Um, yeah. yeah, that's impressive. Otherwise, you suffer, don't you? Because it went on for a while. Yeah. It wasn't one earthquake. It was like ten thousand. Yeah, it's a few. It's <laughs> funny, isn't it? How you adjust to something as well. Because uh, like yeah. six months down the line, all you're doing is guessing the magnitude. Like, oh, yeah. oh it's, that's a seven. That's yeah. a seven, you know. Yeah. Whereas yeah. initially it's just like you know it's quite terrifying, but yeah, yeah. it's amazing how you can adjust. Eh? Oh, <laughs> right. What about yourself? Uh, well, I was just living in town. I was uh, married, and yeah. Um, yeah, I was working in town the day of the quake. So I was right, right in the central city at a cafe, um, and it got pretty messed up. Uh, no one got. Um, I don't think anyone got badly injured in the cafe or anything. So we kind of made our way outside. Um, but yeah, it was kind of it was it was just surreal, I suppose. Looking back at it now, what is it at the old Vivace cafe? Yeah, Vivace. Yeah, oh, is that and where you? Those that yeah, you that's right. Yeah, it was before. on Hereford Street. It was opposite um, 
Scorpio books where that originally was, and it was next door to Mai Tai Monkey Bar. Uh-huh. Um, it was a thin, narrow cafe, um, sort of with an Italian kind of thing. Yeah, I remember Mai Tai Monkey yeah. Bar, yeah. yeah. I've got some pictures of that, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was all kind of rough. And, I, you know, I made my way into the doorway, and I was good for the quake, and then it kind of finished. And um, I let the kitchen hand out the door, who was running around in circles. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and but I went back in and got my phone, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, I talked to the manager, and I was like, "Should we clean up? Um, right? You know, oh, we'll come in tomorrow and we'll do it. Yeah, and stuff like that. Even though the whole front of the building was pretty much crumbled down, wow. we were just sort of saying silly things. And then, um, and look, people died in aftershocks going yeah. back into buildings. I know. Right. So looking back at that, I was pretty fortunate. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, made my way out of the city, bumped into Milton on Durham Street. You were heading towards oh, the hospital right. or the police station? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was walking into town. Is yeah. this yeah. how you guys met or is this... No, uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that would be epic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, you've known each other No, we actually then. worked at the, that cafe oh, together. together. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Really, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's funny, but it's amazing how so many people rally together, you know. that's mm. That was what was kind of impressive about the whole thing, you know. It was like, uh, mm. didn't really stop people, kind of almost brought people together in a that's sense. That's right, you know? unity... Uh, was, was created through that adversity kind mm. of pay. Yeah, kind of pulled people together. Incredible to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. It was cool. Um, so if we rewind a wee bit, you started off at... Uh, so after the carpentry thing, yes. you, you went into the court theatre and did prop work? Yes, I was miserable in carpentry. Mm. Um, I hated it. Um, and Why so, was that? Just oh, because it's... You know, when you're doing something... It was one of those things where... I only got a trade, like, for the... Re- I didn't really get a trade because it's what I really wanted to do. It was a means to an end, so I was yeah. never really doing, without sounding cheesy, my life's purpose, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and I could sense that, and so it just got to a point where I was just like, no, I've had enough. And then mm. um, kind of this uh, advert come up for props technician uh, for the court theatre, and my wife's like, you know, I should just go for it. But it was after experience, loads of experience, you know, I wanted this, this and that, and I was like... How am I going to get it though? And I was just like, I just remember going, do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. And kind of cut a long story short, I was like, what can I do to stand out from the rest? You know, I haven't got any experience, but obviously I've been making art and doing all that for for years. So let's do something different. So mm. <laughs> for a CV, my CV, instead of just having a regular CV, I built a giant tombstone out of foam. Mm. I engraved the court <laughs> theatre on it. It was quite macabre. And then I got like this skull. And uh, I'd painted it all up with moss and, you know, and it was huge. Yeah. And I'd put uh, my CV wax stamped in the mouth of the skull. Oh. And then just drop. Yeah. I remember I remember getting there and the woman, I was like, oh, I'm just uh, dropping off my CV. She was mm. like, oh, just, just hand it in. I was like, oh, it's in the car. She's like, what? And I just mm. come out with this giant tombstone. <laughs> I was like, there's, uh, there's my CV. Mm. And she was like, mm. okay. Mm. Uh, but it got me in the door, you know. Yeah. So, and it got me an interview and a second interview. I got the job, so... <laughs> yeah, that's so how that I was that job. the tombstone wasn't <laughs> sort of you weren't saying something about the court theatre. I wasn't saying theatre. It was, was just dead. the fact that no. you, yeah, yeah, you were just you were just kind of like it was props. Well, it was yeah. a, the job yeah, yeah, was for yeah, props. Exactly. So I was making yeah. a giant prop and incorporating yep. it into like a horror sort of style. Yeah, and I was thinking, how many people are going to make something? <clears throat> It, again, it's like trying to think outside the box, you know. Yeah, totally. And, and, and That's exactly out. what they would want. Yeah, yeah, and it worked. So. Yeah, and that was my. Interestingly enough, that was my first step into uh, that lack of kind of self doubt and like, oh, you know, because growing up, we always had the whole you never make it as an artist, you know, do this, do that. It was indoctrination at school. It really was yeah. in, in England, you know. Mm. And um, there was never much gravitas on the, the money or the, the career you could have behind something that was seen as a hobby, mm. which isn't the case, I don't believe. Um, and so, yeah, and so I took that step and that just opened a whole world of like, oh my God, I could be doing this, you know, as a yeah. full-time career for myself. And, and the people that are going to make it work are going to make it work, yeah. like no matter what. Yeah. There's like you had that in you, you couldn't stop it. Like, yeah, it's like yeah. that saying, isn't it, uh, how's it go, those that say they can and those that say they can't are both probably right. So it's, yeah. I suppose it's just yeah. how you perceive it, isn't it, you know, yeah. without getting all... Yeah. Cheesy. Yeah, for sure. So you stayed there, picked up a whole bunch of skills. Um, 
Um, it was kind of like, it, do you know what? It was wild. The first job, it was like being a kid. I remember the first job. They were like um, the props technician manager was like, "Oh, we've got a bunch of Nerf guns out the back. Do you mind painting them up for Hamlet?" I was like, "No, that's amazing." So it was just like a five year old just yeah. painting these Nerf yeah. guns to look like real guns, you know. And that was the first job I had there. And I was like, "This is incredible." Cool. And it was just those little things like making beating hearts and just figuring out ways of doing stuff. So that was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. How did you make a beating hat? Do you know what's really funny about that story is I had this idea to put carve up some sponge yeah. to look like a heart, paint it, and then put it in two one of the double thick condoms oh, yeah. so that when you squeeze it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it pulsates. Yeah. So, you know, the pro- oh, yeah, yeah, problem yeah, yeah, is, is yeah, first yeah. night on yeah. opening night when they squeezed it, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it burst. Wouldn't you not? So it's they went, they went, away. Yeah, of course it is. It's kind of funny, though. But yeah, it was just like, it was having that uh, creative license to be able to go, oh man, I could do this, I could do yeah. that. So yeah, it was very cool. Ah, right. Great job. Flip. Mm. What was that for? What are they, was that the same one? Was that Hamlet? That was for Hamlet. Yeah, 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 so yeah. They've done a, they, they used to do yeah. loads of shows where they did like a spin on something. Yeah, so, true, you know, true. Hamlet had got yeah. like rifles and it was so random, but yeah. it, was, it was cool. Yeah. yeah. And was it during that time that you had your first exhibition? Uh, or no. had, you, had you started on, did you start the miniatures while you were there or had you? No, no. So, after, so the court was one of those things where I loved it, but I was still, there was still an element of um, restriction because you're not truly creating what you want to create yourself you're doing it to a yeah a spec you know you've got to make this got to make that which is cool but mm. it was i was still there was still a thirst Man, you're yeah you're real hardcore yeah Th- yeah you, you like know? you say thirsting for that purity and yeah, expression of so, that's of expression. right of something yeah. i truly want to do so it was at that point i remember sitting down at christmas going oh man because i, I big into nostalgia so I'm an 80s kid I love that kind of mm. vibe always have it's meant a lot to me growing up like the VHS stores was my mecca so the first <laughs> thing I did and you'll still be able to find it on Instagram was a business called the Monster Mailman oh yeah and I did that for three years and yep. I was it's the most random thing but I was making VHS tapes so I was sculpting them and I was making the case and so it, and it was mainly an American market I, was getting, I wasn't making much money but I was yeah. having a lot of fun with it being very creative and so I'd make this keychain. People would choose the movie they want. Oh, cool. But, again, if you look back on the site, I managed to get some of my stuff. I managed to get one of my tapes to Robert England, who plays Freddy Krueger. Oh, all right. Uh, the original Tony Moran, Mike Myers. So I got some of my stuff. Oh, cool. It's amazing who you can cyberstalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. And just send stuff to people. Um, and so, like, that was just... It, it, the whole process of, of just, like, that validation of yeah. you, you you can do this you know you mm. are good at, you're getting better at what you're doing and, and you know what I mean it's like sometimes you can always like when I was talking about the self doubt thing it's incredible how you can talk yourself out of doing certain things but these were all things that were leading yeah, up to what totally. I'm doing now um, yeah sorry man waffling on there but that's nah, kind man, of that's cool that was, yeah and so, that, that led into the scratch building so yeah yeah and so you you didn't just get you didn't create a mold and just pump out a whole bunch of little video uh, VH VHS tapes or did you yeah yeah did, so, yeah you yeah, create so, a mold yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so cool. I sculpted one uh, made a mold and then cast them in resin had the case and ah. it was just a case of people people like oh I'll choose this movie yeah yeah and yeah. then and it was and I mean I wasn't selling them for much but yeah. it was like it was okay no that's wicked but it was just a way of being creative mm. yeah you know? totally. and again it's just one of those things isn't it where you feel like you're on the right path yeah and exactly it slowly starting to lead you yeah at that time it would have just been yeah. Yeah. What you, was meant to be. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, yeah, totally. You never figure stuff out straight away, do you? No, it's you always, don't. There's always a path in there's there. There's that whole thing, like the journey isn't linear. It's, yeah, no. all over the place yeah, and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, yeah, everyone's doing that. Yeah. Everyone's kind of doing that. So, and then, uh, so sometime after that, did you leave the court theatre first or did you have your yeah. first art show? No, I left the court theatre, started <coughs> Monster Mail, man. Um, then monster, from Monster Mile Man I started scratch building mm. and it was an interesting one you talking about the paths and stuff but isn't it interesting how sometimes things can just meet up and connect and so oh I'm going to I'm going to scratch build something from the city right so I decided to do a wall uh, after the earthquake and mm. there was a group of people putting on paste ups on walls of plasters mm. saying I'll kiss it better mm. it was the people from Fixate Gallery 
Ah, right. And so just randomly, I remember looking at pictures online and stuff. So I was like, oh, I'll build this wall, you know. Mm. I built it, it was cool. And then I posted it online. And someone reached out, a friend of mine was like, oh, that's the Fix That Gallery guys. You should take it into them. I was like, oh, well, why not? So I took that piece in. And then that started up the conversation of, you mm. should do a show. Yeah. I had an idea for the show called yeah. Shadow Town. And then it just took off from there. What year was that? Oh, that's a good question. Was it Three years no, from right, my memory's terrible. Yeah. I'm, I'm in my mid 40s, so I forget a lot. Um, th- uh, uh, three years ago. So, what yeah. were you now? 24, 2021. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. So, and by that stage, there was like a lot of the city had kind of been knocked down at that stage, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. A lot had gone. The slate had kind of been cleaned yes. pretty much. Yeah, definitely. Which is, um, which must have been really hard for you because. I struggle to remember, um, yeah, the the different places. Yeah, Yeah. what was there and stuff like that. And for a while there, when we first opened, everyone was asking us, you know, what was here, what was there, and all the rest of it, as if we knew, which we kind of do know, but um, to actually deeply remember it, it's kind of tough. Well, the longer longer time goes by... Mm the harder it becomes to actually physically remember, you mm. know, what was there. But in regards to what I'm doing, I've spent a lot of time talking to people, researching, getting pictures. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know the whole... I mean, a third of the whole city, I think it was a third, was it? Got, oh, definitely. Got, yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm not going to remember everything, but I think on this journey, um, having those connections with people and places, mm. it's, it's enabled me to remember a lot of where places were and you know so mm. it's been good in that sense um but i yeah i don't know it all what, what was the um so now now what you're working on tell us what you're working on now and how did yeah. that come about okay so um shadow town happened and i'd done you know there's have you seen the stairs on hereford they're the stairs to nowhere and they're just a set of stairs they used to belong to a cinema and they're a set of stairs. They've got Jacob Yikes's artwork on. I don't think I've seen it. You've not seen it. Which, which is opposite appalling. City Fitness. It is. They're, they're cleaning up the building at the moment. It's on Hereford, and it was the Christchurch's most graffiti building. It's cleaned up now. It's getting oh, cleaned up. Right. And there's just this set of stairs that sits in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you go did, up to the top. They, so is it between? Have, did they have little terracotta tiles that are broken? Yeah, on? yeah. I yeah. was looking at that model that, that you made, and oh. I was thinking, I'm, I've seen those stairs. <laughs> yeah. I know where the hell they they are, and I was trying to. Yeah, and they're trying to pin it down. And they still exist because they they were part of the cinema. Um, There's a guy who owns Lumiere now, Nick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, he had a cinema there. And the reason they've not been knocked down is because they've got, like, electrics in them. And they're running Mm. still part of the city, so they've not knocked them down yet. So they still (laughs) sit there going nowhere, which is crazy. Yeah. But I built them for the exhibition. And it was a similar thing. Some people knew and some people didn't know, even from Christchurch. But it was great because... People are like, oh, I'm going to go and see where yeah. they are. So, you know, I've got these few, and I've built the volcano. I don't know if you remember the volcano from Littleton. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah, it was such a dope spot, eh, with the lava bar. And um, it was it was interesting at the opening night because it just created lots of memories, lots of people remembering other places. So this whole this whole vibe of, of you know, what had come from what I'd built, mm. I was like, gave me the idea of like, oh, man, I should... I should do this on a massive scale, you know. Mm. Um, what a great way to kind of bring back our old city. Um, I mean, don't don't get me wrong; the new city is great, but also mm. I think it's I think people have had such fond memories of buildings that used to be even way before the earthquake. It would be great to bring mm. as many iconic ones back and and do it as as part of a book. So yeah. so I'm doing a book and an exhibition in connection with that called uh, Ghosts on Every Corner. Yeah. Which I thought was quite a, a fitting title, you know. How many buildings would you like to complete? Oh, I've done um, on my eighth one. Yep. And I'll I'll have about 11 for the show. Cool. And they're all lit up so you can see inside them. Yeah. And so the idea is is we've got a space. It's at the Pumanara at the Art Centre. So just sort of tell me, how big are we well, talking? Well, we've done... I've got the Canterbury Sail Yards. I don't yeah. know if you remember them. All yep. graffitied up. They're about the, a metre wide. Yeah. I've got the, Atar- <laughs> the good old Atami bathhouse. Yep. Uh, it's about 300 wide by about... Uh, 380 tall yep yep about this um, so uh, they're a good size yeah. you know well that's right they are kind of big because 
there's a lot of detail that would go into that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think it, you know you've got to you've got to get that detail in to do them justice. Yeah, and it enables people to then kind of go, oh, you know, if be flooded with memories. Well, mm. not memories from the Atami, but the other ones maybe, <laughs> or maybe who knows? Maybe who knows? I lived yeah. across the road from the Atami. Um, oh wow. For a year or so, um, and there was one on the other corner as well—a yeah. brothel on the other corner, or you know, massage parlor, or whatever they called them. Yeah, Old Christchurch had quite a few places like that, didn't they? It did. Yeah, Colombo yeah. Street, I recall. With um, with well thought out names. Yeah, so I've been told. <laughs> and themes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, but I've had some, and again, along the, the whole journey, is talking about getting reference pictures and remember where everything is. Lots of stories have come through this. Um, we yeah. even, we even um, so uh, doc, they're working with a guy called Dr. Reuben Woods. He's right. got like a PhD in urban art. He's a great guy. Okay, he, cura- cool. he curated Shift at the museum. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. writing the book. Yeah. So we've been interviewing people. Yeah. And we even we interviewed a lady at the Atami. She reached out to me. Yeah. Her name's uh, she didn't mind me mentioning her. Her name's Mandy, yeah. but she worked at the Atami. What was interesting, she led this double life where she was a lawyer's assistant in Maryvale. Mm-hmm. And then at night she'd go and work yeah. uh, as a call girl at mm-hmm. Atami Bahas, and um, that was a very interesting interview. It was great, mm. um, but it's good to just get perspectives on places and stories. Totally, but, but honestly, because totally. that's what it's ultimately about. It's not yeah. so much about the the bricks and mortar. I mean, um, I mean, it kind of is, but it isn't. But yeah. it's the people that inhabit them and that's the stories right. that surround them. Yeah, definitely. And it's getting. It's, it's, it's almost getting stories that have that essence of what a city means to people as opposed to being like, oh, well, this was a yeah. this had nice food here or this was... It's not a tourist book. It's, it's got to be a bit gritty as well, I think. Which, which also yeah. explains why our beautiful new city, perhaps, um, you know, it's a little bit... I think there's a disconnect between yeah. the people and the buildings I and the city so. itself. Yeah, yeah. And that is simply just going to take a... Time, time, yeah, to build up that that yeah. layering of uh, yeah, like grit, dirt, kind of stories and uh, yeah. experiences. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because it's very fresh. It's very yeah. new, you know. Because cities but. aren't yeah, they they're not um, yeah, they they're not compartmentalized. They're not isolated, yeah, and they're not just yeah. standalone entities that don't. You yeah. know, it's the people in it. Yeah, definitely, definitely that make the places. That's right, come alive. Um, and yeah, and that's what's great about listening to some of the the, the things from the old city. It's just like yeah, you realise that people were connected hard to these mm. places, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've had some great stories. It, it's funny as well. You're trying to get the right stories for each build. I did the repertory theatre. True. And yep. um, I was like, man, what? I don't know if I'm going to get something that's that you know has something of some. <laughs> interest to, to people and then weirdly someone reached out and was like oh my uh, my great granddad worked there mm. um, and he was again hit weirdly he worked in props uh, and then we got we've got a newspaper article and he had a wooden leg <laughs> and he oh. um, he passed away and then after he passed away people could hear his wooden leg so apparently the repertory was haunted and oh. there's a I've got a newspaper article from 1988 about him tapping his wooden leg around the theatre as a ghost and I'm like this is brilliant I mean if that's not a great story yeah. you know yeah. I don't know what is yeah so um, <laughs> and it's funny what stories you can use and can't like even mm. with the Atami oh my god there's, there's yeah. stories I'm just like I can't I can't use those <laughs> oh. damn you got to write them I don't know I well, mean I, well, yeah I, that's right like what happens because when people pass away their stories sometimes go with them right yeah yeah and I course. mean I suppose that's just part of you know we can't record and document absolutely everything. everything no no but to be able to record a moment in time and these moments in time yeah um, albeit like you say you can't do yeah. everything it's just nice it when they all of that you know yeah, yeah it's pretty cool when they are shit um, I mean I I, I, I I could give you an example of one of the stories. Yeah, go for it, man. Okay, so... Um, Are these the one of the ones that you can't share? Yeah, yeah, but I'll share it here. <laughs> um, so, a uh, few people had got in contact about the time. I've even got pictures of the inside, which is kind of cool uh, for the book, and I can use them and stuff. But someone was like, I remember some nights, uh, there'd be a lady that come on stage... And he said uh, she'd bring on a sandwich press. I didn't know. I genuinely was, I was like confused. Like she'd make sandwiches. He was like, no, no, no. He um, yeah. she plugged the sandwich press in, let it heat up, and then urinate on the sandwich press, and then oh. dance in the steam of the. And he said wow. it used to smell terrible in there, and I was like, 
Yeah, I can't put that in the book. <laughs> no, that's so peculiar. But that's why that's the Atami crazy. had such like it. Like everyone's yeah. like, oh my god, everyone yeah. knew the Atami, yeah, 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 even yeah. if you'd not been in. I suppose, yeah, stories or things like that. Um, yeah, uh, you're wanting to find something different. That's, but that's I would imagine there. that's different. That's yeah. that's out there, isn't it? Not that I. No, yeah, I've, I've never heard anything like that before. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's lot, and there's yeah. lots. That's not yeah. just one. And and it's like you know, you, you think, oh, how much? Because sometimes, like, you can't always get validations from stories. You just have no. to take the yeah, book. Yeah, but yeah. from how many different stories I've heard, they're all very similar. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure they're true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it'll be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fascinating. It yeah, is fascinating. it is. It is. And to think that stood between just regular shops and so it, was just, it was just this pink building yeah that's right even when I was scratch building I scratch building like a banner that was on the uh, the balcony and it was from, it was actual artwork from a picture from the front and on the banner it was like open for strip shows Monday through to Thursday and Friday afternoons at 1.30pm mm. so, so some people must have just been like oh what are we going to do for lunch they're well, not going to feel it yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, right so, but again, it's all rich fabric of the the history of the city, really, isn't it? You know, yeah, which is cool. Yeah, the, and one actually, you remind me. I've seen the model on Instagram of Java. Oh yes, Java's like that was pretty intense. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, that was a real hub in Christchurch. I don't know how long it was open for, um, but when I was a young teenager and partying all night type of thing, yeah. that's, that was open 24 hours over yeah. the weekends, yeah. um, as was Caffeine's in the yeah. square. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, Java was kind of iconic and stuff. It was... It had, interestingly enough, is it had, out of all the builds I've done, I think it had the most response in regards to people, and it had a big response. Yeah. So it obviously meant a lot to a lot of people. That, yeah, it must be kind of, yeah, during the 90s it was big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was kind of, rave culture was kind of kicking off, and um, yeah, and so was coffee culture, yeah, you yeah. know? And they, um, it's just those little things as well that makes a place. You had the mezzanine floors, you could mm. smoke in there. Mm. Obviously, had a great vibe. And there was lots of people that talked to me about they weren't of age where they could drink, so they no. wanted to go somewhere yeah, like yeah, late. Yeah. And it was yep. like I said, open twenty four seven, so they yeah. just go and hang, smoke smoke dories, yeah, drink coffees. Yeah, caffeine's yeah. used to sell single cigarettes from behind the counter. I don't know if he was allowed to that guy, Singles. but anyway, did. like camels, yeah. single camel for like a dollar or fifty cents. It was probably fifty cents. I ah, think. see, all those things um, are just amazing. You like, like you said, things that don't really happen today. They're just kind yeah. of like, you're like, oh, I yeah. remember when. <laughs> well, yeah, Java, um, I've got a funny story about Java, and it's not mine, but it's uh, my wife, it. one of my wife's workmates. Um, you know, they serve the, the coffee and in the jars. hot chocolates in these a- AG jars. Yeah. And, and um, uh, so my wife's workmate was on a date there, first date, and... Um, Went along, had a big hot chocolate, all the rest of it, started off the evening there, and then they went on and went to movies and uh, sort of... uh, When she finally wound up at home, uh, she looked at herself in the mirror and um, she had, like, this big cocoa, because they they would sprinkle cocoa over the jar, and she'd push the jar up against her face. She's got a monobrow. And she had this monobrow, (laughs) and she went the whole evening with this... (laughs) This big line of cocoa, and the guy never said anything. <laughs> Incredible, <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> and see, that's great, isn't it? It's all those little memories, and there's been so many come through. Yeah, uh, but that's what you know. That's, it's those connections, and they're so they're just wonderful, you know. Mm. And everyone can relate because uh, you know we all have our, our memory and our nostalgia of these places. Like even even you can even take it. Like we're talking as Christchurch as a whole. It's funny someone had it, like. Someone had mentioned to me saying, do you think you'll sell the books further afield because it's only Christchurch? And I just think it's quite transferable in the sense that everyone has those stories from places, no matter what city you're from, there's still the corner dairy that they used to hang out on mm. or those little places they grew up with and just, just you know, those little things that meant so much to them. So I, I feel like you can associate no matter what city you're from. Do, do you, would you agree? Yeah, I would. Sense? I would, yeah. Because why do you reckon people were drawn to like minute, miniatures in the first place? Like why why do we 
Well, how, how can it end up in an art gallery? Like, why it's, is that? And why are people sort of in droves? Just be, all I think, so fascinating. I think there's a sense of something that's a model and that's 3D that mm. a picture doesn't give. So you're able to see it in, in, in a way that is a lot more visceral than a mm. picture. You know, because again, the buildings I build, I build them inside. I'm like, I just did the wizards and I've done all the arcade lights, lighting mm. up inside and stuff. So it gives you a sense of being there. Like a few people have said that when they're there, it's like they've been taken back to when yeah. when it used to exist because you're seeing it in that format. Yeah, that three Albeit it's thing. not giant, mm. but it's, you know, it's still, you're, still getting, you're still getting that sense of what it was, mm. if that mm. makes sense. No, you know, you're right. So, yeah, yeah I, think, I think people will from other cities will... Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll still get into it. Yeah, yep, yeah, for sure. Um, and so you know, it's just trying to do it, trying to do it justice. This projects have been going on for yeah for nearly three years now, um, mm-hmm. and so it's coming to a finally coming to a head. And it'll be um, like I said, we've got space at the art centre next year. Yeah, and so the exhibition Wicked. will release with the book, and yeah. yeah, it's exciting. It's really exciting, you know, for me. Um, it's it's unusual in the sense that you're taking something from the street and putting it in the art gallery. I guess that's been happening for a while now. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. In, but it is two worlds, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's kind of two worlds, kind of coming together and colliding. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and like I say, it's not scratch building. Hasn't really. I've never really seen it in New New Zealand. Obviously, mm. there's artists doing it in America and Australia, mm. but I've never really seen it here. Mm. And I just well, thought, and there's people who make large things, right? Yeah, there's the Ron yeah. Ron Muick. Ron Muick's, and, yeah. Oh my god, did you go to that show? At, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. It's the opposite of that. Yeah, and not only is it something that's small, it's intriguing, it's it's a connection to what people remember, so totally. it works on quite a few <clears throat> levels, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's good. And it's kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, um, it's endless, really. I could, it's, it's funny how many people have message me going oh you're going to build this place you're going to right. I think people are right. thinking when they, the exhibition kicks up it's going to yes. be the whole CBD I'm yeah. like mm, right. yeah. I'm only one man <laughs> so but um, hopefully at the ones I've picked I've tried to pick ones that have that kind of iconic status because I mean yeah. there are there are there are hundreds that we lost mm. but trying to pick the ones that kind of gravitate yeah man it's like the greatest hits it's a compilation yeah of, that's um, yeah I, that's, I remember looking at, at um, some of your models yeah and, yeah for me the one that clicked off was the Java Cafe oh that, wild that, that had the most yeah. most visceral impact and it sure. did have that kind of yeah, impact from seeing it I was just it. like oh wow it's Java uh, uh, forgotten what it would look like and it's that's like holy awesome. shit that's java oh that's it's awesome and and do you find that when you see something that you haven't seen for a while it brings certain kind of things back oh 100 percent. yeah it's that's just brilliant this massive flood from the past from that's awesome somewhere that's in my unconscious of yeah and that's what yeah. makes it worth it just that little mm. even those little things makes mm. it all worthwhile you know um and to be able to bring that back to people and just kind of like, I don't know, it's, there's something quite special about it, I think. Yeah. You know? I, I remember going to the museum as a child and just being fascinated by the dioramas. Yeah. And behind the glass, and especially if they had a bit of depth perception yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just fascinated with them. Just, um, it's just so much going on as well, I suppose. And it's interesting, like, getting people's reactions from something that exists in the real world large and then seeing it... It's just like it's hard to get your head around. I think I think both mm. ways, like you said with Rom Muick, it works both ways. When yeah. something's massive, it's like what or something. It's, it's like it's just it adds some sort of magic for it some does. reason. It's hard yeah. to it's hard but to quite. There's the artist who is wrapping whole islands in plastic <laughs> at one stage. Oh, really? Yeah, wrapped whole like tropical island. The whole island was wrapped in Walters. plastic. And there's something crazy, weird, interesting about that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah I do. do you know who the artist is? No, I don't. No? Oh, that's wild. I'll look it up. I'll have to, I was going to say, I'll have to Google that. But yeah, it's um, it's good. Um, yeah, and I'm excited. So there's some good stuff happening. But this is the final push now, this year. Yeah. Um, just getting, like I said, getting all the stories together. Because the book's got to get done in time mm. for the exhibition mm. as well. So... Yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot on this year, but it's yeah. good. It's all good and you've stuff. connected with a lot of people in the street. What is it? The urban art, the street scene, like yeah. the street art. Yeah, artists. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a good community of people um, here in Christchurch, and um, made some great friends. Um, and yeah, it's just been a lot of collabs have happened through that as well. So I've done yeah. stuff with these artists. You yeah. know, um, like part of the shifting was great. That was a great experience. Just being able to 
knock through the museum and then just have it. Did you, either of you two? Oh, I didn't to go to that. I, I, I looked all of, all of the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, it was good. It was good. It was real good. Just in photograph form. But yeah, that would have been a cool one to go to. I yeah. heard it was really good. Yeah, it was. It was great. And so you know. Um, there's a lot going on for a little old Christchurch, yeah. you know? The fact that they've... And I've never heard of that before, the fact that they've just knocked through an yeah. entire museum. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often, so yeah, it was yeah, cool. Yeah, we, we have a unique opportunity, even yeah, though it was a sure. disaster and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it does provide a unique opportunity for us to... Like, almost write our future, or write, write our, you know... Yeah. You know. And, and that's what I'm trying to do as well, is like, <clears> you know, people are, you know, there's a lot of... Um, heartache and mourning going after the earthquakes and what I'm trying to do is not ref- it's not a reflection of the, the bad it's more of a reflection of the good yeah. things we had you know yeah. um, so I, I feel like uh, yeah it does that without being too hard if they've, that makes sense yeah well and they've talked about the trauma that something like an event like that causes and um, I'm relatively resilient and I was like yeah, yeah. whatever hmm. trauma yeah. trauma <laughs> <laughs> but now I can kind of see it on another level, and I can see that um, having that abrupt kind of end can produce. Well, it has it has consequences, yeah, yeah. and different consequences for everyone. And and then bringing back some of those things and lo- those little model forms, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it is it is kind of interesting the reactions that you're going to get. Yeah, and it's um, it was like one of those things where it was making the best out of a bad situation. You mm. know, you had so many graffiti artists as well painting murals on broken mm. buildings yeah, and turning true. broken buildings from essentially what is very tragic, which it was, yeah. um, into something uh, that creates an art piece. So yeah, then that, yeah. that merged and kind of spawned this whole, you know, uprising of, yeah. of the art within yeah. Christchurch. I think we're in the top ten of street art. Street art, yeah, yeah. the urban scene, which is wow. incredible. How incredible is that? The city council, are they kind of, they must be, what's the relationship between the street artists and the city council? Yeah, the the council get on board with that stuff. Um, I'm doing stuff through the council at the moment um, in conjunction with this project. I'm putting stuff up on lampposts. Yeah. um, uh, And that's, um, and they've been great. Mm. And I know they do stuff with other graffiti artists and stuff. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. But like you said, like, I said about tagging before, but there's a difference, yeah, right? There's like a difference that, between tagging and graffiti. <laughs> um, there well, is, but it's still, yeah. it's still. I mean, this is unpopular opinion, but there's still an element of art form in that. Yeah, you know, it's like a lot of people. Um, and again, yeah, I understand in regards to where it goes, it mm. can upset people. Mm. Um, but there is still a level of art form. In, totally. In that, you know, as opposed to it being just vandalism. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Again, it's it's there's a fine line, isn't there, for some people? Yeah, totally. Um, oh, sorry, that's my freaking alarm clock. I have to wake up. Yeah, is it time to get yeah. up? I've been asleep yeah, this whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this whole thing's been a dream. You would be talking yeah. to me. <laughs> I, I looked up the artist, um, John, uh, Jean-Claude. Jean-Claude. And Christo. Artists Jean-Claude and Christo. Anyway, they, they, wrap, they put uh, pink fabric around... Around the islands. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, they can, uh, oh, the can whole that I- That's nuts. Yeah, in Miami. Islands off Miami. In the 80s. That's wild what some people have created. That's when plastic was kind of... Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think it's plastic. It's right, it's oh, fabric. Right. It's fabric. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fabric. But in my head, I... Yeah, I thought it was plastic. I visualised it differently. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's Shrink crazy. Wrap. Shrink wrap in Ireland. Uh, some amazing stuff like yeah. that, sure. Yeah. I used to, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, I used to be into a website called Art Crimes. Oh, okay. And... Um, after seeing some of you, because you've done some railway uh, sort of freight yeah. things as I, well. Yeah, I had a show in, in Auckland um, called The Main Line, um, yep. which was cool. Um, that was reaching out to Askew. I don't know if you've heard of Askew. He's got some work. Yeah. Yep. And then Lim Gallery, and they had this idea of doing the old space runners back from the early 90s yeah. through to the early 2000s. And then we just got all these New Zealand graffiti artists and they did a piece. I made the trains, and then mm. it was just this huge collaboration, um, and that was that was incredible. That was great. That was a good show. Yeah, um, yeah. Art, art crimes documented graffiti all over the world, and, yeah. and they they sort of categorised it and did it and stuff. I went back on the website, and they, they sort of stopped posting in two thousand and seventeen. Oh, okay. 
Uh, but yeah, I was mad keen about that because there was some, you know, being able to just click on a city in the world and, and then see. look at the walls or the trains or the whatever's there were. Yeah, it's cool. It's it was, just a little. It's just a little peek in, into another another world, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And looking at the kind of the trends and the the styles uh, in the different places. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I used, I, but I never really got into like doing it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of random. Yeah, but I mean, it's um, to observe those things because I don't do yeah. those things myself either. But I can appreciate how they are. Do you reckon you could just get into street art? Like, if I woke up tomorrow and I was like, "Sweet, I'm going to go out and produce street art." Yeah. Do you think I could do that, <laughs> um, or, or am I at risk of getting in trouble? I suppose that's down to you more than anything. I suppose that's a only that's that's only a question you can answer. Yeah, if that makes sense, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just don't get caught. Yeah, and it, I suppose yeah. There's lots of elements, isn't there? Like you say, street art. I, could, I, I think you can draw. You can you do those? Th- I can hold a pencil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. you know, it's like what's what's stopping you? Yeah, in, yeah. In a sense, you know. Yeah, like it's like, do you do do you not do things because of fitting in, or do you not do things because there's a certain crisis? I suppose you just have to. Mm. There's an element of just taking the risk yourself, isn't there? Yeah, because like you say, boxes. Christchurch has a real amazing little community of people or large community. I'm not too sure, but there's a lot around the place. Yeah, but and it's subversive and kind of def- it's great. It's yeah, amazing. definitely. And there's people that are doing things that they're passionate about and they're becoming sex- they're successful. I mean, mm. there's a guy friend of mine um nat and he's just he he does giant pencils okay yeah. so that's his that's his thing and he's done very well from mm. doing something that means something to him so yeah in a sense anyone yeah yeah that you know is enjoys art can yeah. just get out there and do what they they want to do yeah there's no real hard set fast rule is there as to what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing um as long as it comes from a, pa- a place of uh you know, genuine being, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Doing yeah, it for totally. yourself as opposed to doing it for anyone else. I used to do that heaps. I was like, for such a long time before I was doing any of this, always trying to make stuff based on what I thought other people may like. Yeah. And none of it ever worked. Then as soon yeah. as I got to a point and a realisation that I'm just going to do what I love and yeah, things kind of just... It's almost like that energy, isn't it? People sense yeah. that. Does that make about me sounding all weird? No, man. I mean, like and, and that, that goes back to <laughs> when you were at the court theatre, you knew that it wasn't even though it was amazing, it still wasn't you expressing yeah, yourself. Yeah, and you can yeah. feel that at the core of you, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, just but those things don't. Um, it's like that's life, isn't it? You have to you have to go through those. You have to be kicked in the dick a few times <laughs> to figure it out. If that mm. makes if that yeah. makes sense, it's 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 been one of those things, isn't it? Where for my journey, anyway, it's just like I feel like I've had to suffer in certain ways mm. to be where I'm at. Because I don't think I'd be where I'm at without it. Because mm. without that, I feel like you don't grow or you don't learn. It's just like... Imagine if you got everything first time, first shot or whatever. What are you truly creating from yeah. that, you know? Yeah. I, I just don't I don't think it's... Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It just wouldn't work. No. You would get... Yeah, it just wouldn't work. Have you ever graffitied Milton? <clears throat> Uh, maybe a couple, couple of little things, but not not really. Now's the yeah. time, lads. Let's get mm. the cans out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Dave. Do, do you want to do a bit of a collab? <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what ideas? You've got any ideas? I'm awesome at dick and balls. I always have been. Oh from yeah. A, yeah, I did a yeah. mean. Yeah, really good. Like from a. a <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I, I'm actually not. Um, yeah, it was my go-to. I mean, that always gets a good smile. Yeah. Well, you know, if you do it well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, yeah. Your dick and balls. Did, did you put the pubes on? No, I never did. I never did pubes. I, I actually mix it up a little bit. I put a foreskin on the penis, which is oh, yeah. Oh, it's very creative. Mate. creative. <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah. creative. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can cut that, but um, yeah, it's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, Mike. Cool, yeah. Mike. Yeah. No, man. Um, <laughs> no, I'm interested in that kind of how it all kind of fits together yeah, and where it yeah. kind of sits. And well, stuff. I just remember because that it needs to. There's an element that it needs to be edgy, right? Yeah. And it, there's a there's an element of breaking the rules and kind of, of course crossing over into that yeah. boundary and stuff. I love that. There's a graffiti yeah. just on the building across the road with um, <clears throat> Terence McKenna. 
Oh, Terence McKenna. That was, was like, um, whoa, that's that's so cool. Yeah, that's a friend of mine did that. That's Guy. So that was Decipher and Jacob Yikes did that. Mm. Um, and what was interesting about that piece, we had a little street art festival. I don't know if you guys heard of it. Um, that was something Ruben curated. So he got a bunch of artists to create stuff on a smaller scale. Mm. Um, and then put it around the city and we made me and Jacob Yikes made uh, magic mushrooms and I sculpted them he painted them and we had them growing out of the brick wall by Terence McKenna uh, um, uh, Terence McKenna's a legend oh mate he is yeah yeah, I love the guy uh, what have I read recently Yikes lent me a book it was it a Total Hallucinations uh, true hallucinations. True hallucinations. Yeah, yeah. That's, and he goes into the Amazon base it's that's a wild story and yeah, he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. incredible. Well yeah. ahead of his time. His brother's yeah. quite intelligent as he well. Is. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember getting halfway through the book just thinking, God, I'm so dumb. <laughs> I had to look up so many words in that book. I was his, like, his, uh, his articulation of speech and language and, and putting across complex concepts for everyday people is just phenomenal. Yeah. He's the best talker I've ever, ever oh. heard who talk oh he's brilliant there's one and he says he puts it in a nutshell and it's very simple and I remember Terence McKenna just saying I'm going to start off he was talking I'm just start off by saying nobody literally nobody has a fucking clue what's going on oh, I love it no and I'm just like and that just that's such a resonation like, mm. he's so right no one no one's I, I often say one of Terence's lines self similar across scale oh nice it's yeah. so fucking good yeah he's the man yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very clever guy. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, I love his, his yeah. graffiti work over the years. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, that's, so that was Decipher. Um, he's got heaps of stuff around the city. He's great. Um, but yeah, some amazing talent, amazing talent. And there's always stuff, I don't know if you know, there's always stuff popping up around the city. Mm. Yeah, just like, oh, there's a new piece, new piece. So it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I kind of keep my eyes peeled for little, little bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember it's, from um, years ago just seeing... Uh, Kilroy was here. Uh, Kilroy, do you remember that? I don't remember yeah. Kilroy. It was just like a um, PK is like one of the most prolific taggers. Whoever the hell PK oh, is, do you PK, know who PK mate? is? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. No, it's just right. the little hands coming over the top of the wall. <laughs> In the is a little oh, face. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that his? Oh, is that who does that artwork? No, uh, Kilroy. Sometimes Actually, it would have Kilroy. Kilroy was. I know the yeah. one. It's it's. Is that the it's character quite, with the long nose? Yeah, that's yeah. the one, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got no idea who's. Done it or anything? No, I, think I don't. Quite, actually, I think it's quite universal. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who the hell Kilroy is or anything. Oh, like is that, that who it is? That that's iconic. Yeah, yeah, it's iconic. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah, PK, you could literally go to <laughs> a toilet in I don't know <laughs> Kaikoura, a long yeah. drop, and there'd be like a PK yeah. piece. Yeah, so, like, and does anybody know who PK yes. is? Yes, yeah, Mike yeah. does. Yeah. Oh, he's Mike does, such yeah. an and yeah. it's so funny because which it's not when you you know when you have a certain idea of who someone may be yeah and then you yeah. meet that person it's just like wow you're not what I expected but he's like such the nicest guy such a cool dude yeah and he's very young as well so yeah, yeah. but um, yeah yeah he's a good guy yeah I can't believe PK's been I'll, I'll be some random place and like PK's been here yeah what the fuck it's I great, might even man. have one yeah. of the stickers on the fridge do I. I've got some, oh, I've got some, because the yeah. guys that put the stickers up, yeah. I'll occasionally, if they're on our building or on the gates or something, I'll peel them off and I'll chuck them on the fridge it's out like the back. That, that dude oh, gets nice. around, man. So, yeah, he d- yeah, that dude yeah. takes to the streets. And hard, people, eh? and not just the streets. Uh, I've been up in the Port Hills walking mm. around with the kids during the lockdown and stuff, and people even will um, do a wee tags up there and stuff. I can't remember the guy, yeah. but um, it's kind of like, found it, one it, it doesn't ha- bother I found me. one in my hallway, mate. It's like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how did he get into my house? <laughs> <laughs> That's a worry. <laughs> taking it to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's 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 and that's like you're the same as me. I, I like that sort of stuff. I still see yeah. it, but, but yeah. there's still that fine line of people yeah. being like vandalism, you know. So Yeah. I mean that does happen as well. However, it's your reaction to anything in life, of right? It is. It's your hey, reaction. It's your perception. Yeah, yeah control it and yeah. yeah, we we've been graffitied here and stuff, but the way I see it, I usually take a photograph of it and post it on Instagram because nice. then it's there forever. Because it's yeah. gonna get wiped off. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't well, bother me too I, much. I think um, the guy who owns the building across the road, he put up a big, couple of big chalkboards. Mm. And like, there's a lot of graffiti that goes up on there and it gets rubbed off. Yeah. Like, I don't know, he's oh, sort of, he must right. have sort of flowed with it. Yeah. It. True. And that's it. And that's such a good outlook. What you said there is literally how 
you should outlook everything in life is just how you react to everything, mm. isn't it? Mm. Essentially, you know. Yeah, totally. You know, it's how much stress you're creating yourself by reacting yeah. to something. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You just gotta let yeah. it. Just accept what is, kind of thing. Like I was yeah. saying earlier, um, that's vital. I mean, it's taken me a long time to learn that. But I feel like the older I've got, the more I'm just like, nah, water off a duck's back, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yep. And I, I, it's one of those things as well as is, is like spent a long time. Don't know how you guys. I uh, understand this but people pleasing and in my 20s and you know trying to please everyone but then I think you get to a certain age where you don't actually give a shit well you, you give a shit but the people that don't um, enrich your life you just it's like you know you're not mm-hmm. going to please everyone is what I'm saying I feel like fundamentally if everyone likes you you're doing something wrong yeah does that make sense yeah. oh, I'm not totally. a prick I'm not a prick 100%, but, 100%. but yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. you're coming out of the sense of your own being yeah and, and, 100% and yeah. there's a lack of integrity there yeah. but I'm not just saying I'm perfect because I went through that I went through most of my life like that you know but now it's just like well you know if you don't agree you don't like that it's not my problem if, if everybody's going through that some that, yeah that sort of abstraction away from from your own essence, or yeah, your ego, yeah, 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 that's right. Not everyone gets there, though. Sadly, no, you know, most I don't think most people do. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, I, it's a difficult one, isn't I think it? It's always in there. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's levels, lost. isn't there? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Look, look at us deep diving. Yeah, I'm kind of like. Well, <laughs> it's sure interesting, mate. It I, is. I, I loved your little the volcano little model on the lamppost. Oh, happened. that's that's the cancel thing yeah. I was talking about. Yeah. So the that's the, so they're cute. The, that's QR coded. So yep. I'm doing about 15 of them. So you'll go around. It's a bit like a treasure hunt around town, but you'll see these bills, and they're put exactly where the building used to be. So when you see it, in fact, I'm putting the wizards one up this weekend. Um, and so when you QR code it. It'll show you, you know, it's the Ruben's done a write up about the build and what was there. It's kind yeah. of a nice way to, me, you know, be like, oh, it's, it was in this spot, you know. Yeah, you could like totally miss a couple up, put, put the old volcano where wizards used to be. No, it just really, really <laughs> mess with people. people like, what the fuck? I don't yeah, know. It's like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's cool, and that's that's a great it's a great segue into what I'm doing as well. So. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see the finished uh, like exhibition and things. Well, and you guys and, and in, even the book. Yeah, you guys are invited to the opening night Look. if you're keen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, Thanks, sweet. Where, where is it going to be? Uh, Puminawa at the Art Centre. Yeah, yeah. So you know where Francis Nation is? Yeah. yeah. And it's just above, yeah. just above there. Yeah, it's yeah, a really yeah. nice spot. It's got like exposed brick and it's a nice little, so nice man, feel That's going to gonna be packed out. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I suppose an artist's worst... Nightmare is you're just sitting there with a beer and you've just got your <laughs> wife and your kid there. And there's no one else. Although there is no one else, I'd rather be there than my wife and kid. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I had that at the first at Shadow Town. I was like, I've never done an exhibition before. I'm like, oh my god, no one's turning up. This is going to be embarrassing. But look at this. Oh, I did so. Yeah, yeah man. That's yeah, good stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Cool, man. Cheers. Thanks so much for coming in. No, thanks yeah, for having thanks, me. Man. Yeah, it was lovely meeting you guys. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Cool. See ya.